We head to South Africa now, where a life-changing thing is happening on the roofs of homes there. Some of the settlement is being powered through solar panels, literally empowering the whole community. Not just with electricity, but with job skills too. Isali Jacobson reports. Just a few kilometers from the heart of Stellenbosch, with its well-preserved historic buildings, lies Enkanini, an informal settlement of 6,000 people that has no electricity. But an initiative from the Sustainability Institute of the University of Stellenbosch has brought solar-powered electricity to the households of Enkanini. The idea around this was uh, so that we could come up with a case study uh, to show other municipalities and informal settlements how solar home systems could be used to bridge the gap between informal settlements and waiting for state services, which can be up to you know, 10 years. But after 10 years, Enkanini has no waste collection, one tap for 130 people, and 70 people share one toilet. The Gates Foundation and Green Fund will finance the first 1,800 installations. But the idea is for ISHAC to be financially sustainable and provide affordable solar solutions to the community, with prices between $5 and $8 per month, depending on the service. It has also trained up 14 community members to do installations and maintenance. Daniel Giossi, an ex-security guard, was the first of these. What I like about it is to serve my community. So it's about community development. Within my own area that I'm staying in, so I'm happy to be part of that. Having the ISHAC system reduces the reliance on paraffin and other dangerous fuels like that. So that has the knock-on effect of actually reducing the fire risk, of which there have been many in, in Nkanini. Nindiswe Loleka is a beneficiary of an ISHAC system. Before, we used this one. So it was very, very dark. So and then the people of ISHAC did come and put these lights for us and also, yeah. They also give us a TV, we rent all the system. They are grateful and happy because this is not only about having a, a, a cheaper and safe light into their homes, but also having an attainment to their children, like TV, they can watch their programs on TV, same like the people that are connected to the national grid. I asked Daniel if he thought solar power was a solution to South Africa's energy problems. Not the solution for the country only. I think it can be the solution to the world as well. Because what I've noticed, this energy we are using, it has very toxic results that can also be harmful to the nature. But the kind of system we are dealing with that is solar, is sustainable and it's from the sun. It's clean energy. So far, ISHAC has installed a thousand systems. The Sustainability Institute wants to replicate what it's done with ISHAC and Nkanini throughout informal settlements. With a backlog of 30,000 houses in Stellenbosch alone, having access to solar-powered electricity could provide informal settlements with a solution that could dramatically improve residents' lives. Isley Jacobson for VOA Stellenbosch. A solar-powered bus described by its Ugandan makers as the first in Africa has made its public debut. Kira Motors' electric bus, Kayola, displayed recently at a stadium in Uganda's capital. From Kampala, Maurice Magurain filed this report as narrated by Salem Solomon. Kayula is the brand name for this bus, powered by solar panels on its roof. It seats 35 passengers, and its maker, Kira Motors, hopes the Kayula could become the first public bus in Africa to be powered by the sun. The engines of these electronically powered buses are completely silent, says the chief engineer of the project. With this bus, there's actually no engine. Uh, what is driving the bus is a motor, a traction motor, which has been run by uh, a battery. And the battery banks are the ones that are linked to the solar system that's on the roof. So uh, we have the batteries that are driving the motor, and that gives us a full range of uh, eight kilometers on full charge. And then the solar panels come in to supplement the, uh, the, the extra you know, mileage. So it adds an extra 12 kilometers to the total. 
The Cayula bus can be recharged using solar power or connected to an electronic power source. Best of all, it doesn't emit harmful carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The systems are fully run on uh, green energy, so things to do with the uh, polluting environment, which ultimately will affect, and that's the reason why you work on uh, such a product, so, because in the future, we're looking at uh, sustainable and green energy. This solar-powered bus also helps save money on petrol by relying 100% on abundant, renewable sunlight. The difference between this Kyola bus, the solar bus, and these other buses is that the other ones are using fuel. This one is using batteries. But as you are driving, as you are driving, when you're accelerating, you can't tell. It's powerful like these other buses. Ugandan authorities say the Kayula bus can help solve Kampala's traffic jams. The more options, we believe it will help a lot in the issue of congestion. The price of this prototype bus is estimated at more than $140,000. If this model can be mass-produced, the price will drop and will sell for around $55,000 each. However, before the Kuyula bus is out on Ugandan roads, customers have to be patient. There hasn't been an official date set for its release. Salem Solomon for Marcus Magrini, BOA News. It's time now for another break. Before we go, a reminder to visit our website, channelstv.com, for all the latest information day or night. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come on Africa 54. A bumper crop in Nigeria's tomato industry, but can it all be sold? We'll take a look at the victory's challenges and solutions. That story after the break. <laughs> 